NZXT has decided to throw their hat into the USB microphone game. Yeah, I know I've been reviewing a lot of microphones lately, but I got another one for you. Let's go. My name is Chris. This is Coalition Gaming. And today I'll be your stream technician or mic technician. Real quick, if you're around here and are into tech, PC, hardware, gaming, stream tips, and tutorials, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So feel free to stop on by. Let's talk some tech, you know, drop a follow that too, maybe. Anyways, let's get to the video. This is the NZXT capsule. It is a USB cardioid condenser microphone. And uh, I have to say the build quality, first and foremost, it is solid. This thing is kind of a little on the big side, but nice and heavy as well. And uh, let's just quickly talk about what you guys are looking at here. We have headphone volume because it does have a low latency monitoring jack right there on the bottom. If it'll focus, there you go. And it's USB type C. So that's always nice to see. And you control what goes to the headphones through that port on this knob. This knob is your microphone gain knob. And the microphone gain knob is cool because, well, you can control gain right here. So you can just leave that maxed out on the computer and then control the gain here to get your tuning. And uh, it's also is if you push on it, it works as a mute button. And I actually really, really like this feature because when you push on it, the mic lets you know that you're muted. This ring turns red and it might look orange on camera, but it's a, a bright red ring and uh, that way you know you're muted and now it's unmuted and there you go now the stand it's kind of unique because the stand basically clips off like you unclip it you push a button here and the whole stand comes off and then you just put an insert on it that way if you're going to mount it to an arm it's more like a quick release thing instead of like a screwing knobby thing so a few more details on this microphone. It's what I would consider a large diaphragm mic. I believe it's a 24 millimeter capsule, which I think is a pretty big capsule considering most mics on Amazon and stuff are like 16 to 18 millimeter and they call themselves large diaphragm. So this thing is gonna be sensitive. Uh, if you look at the back on it too, this is kind of nice because on the back it has like, uh, I don't know, air pass through, I suppose. So something to help with how the microphone sounds. Well, I mean, we'll see how it sounds shortly here. And uh, another little note here, it says that it's internally shock mounted. I don't trust internal shock mounts and microphones. You need more space than what's inside a casing like that. So other mics that advertise that they're internally shock mounted still take advantage of then being externally shock mounted. There's only so much you can do when the capsule can only move around this much as opposed to having a shock mount the whole thing and the whole thing can also move around to prevent shock, you know? So this is the insert that goes into the back. If you take the stand off and you put it on an arm, this is what you're gonna wanna use. So let's do that real quick. We can throw it on this arm and you guys can see a head to head real quick. I'm going to turn off the effects on this microphone so you guys can see how this $130 USB cardioid condenser mic sounds against this $100 uh, XLR dynamic microphone. OK, this is how I sound with all effects on this microphone turned off. No EQ, no noise gate, no compressor, just raw audio, maybe a little bit of gain just so you guys can hear it better. But this is how this mic sounds raw. Now let's move on to the NZXT capsule. All right. And now here we are on the NZXT microphone on my arm. Now, the first thing that I want to demonstrate is the internal shock mounting that it's talking about. So with the shock mount, impacts from tapping on your desk, if your mic arm is mounted to your desk, really shouldn't reverberate through, but... Looking at the bars in OBS, that doesn't look too bad, but we'll be listening back here and I'll get my thoughts on that shortly here. Now let's try it with the typing. Let's just type because it is a cardioid condenser or rather it's a cardioid pickup pattern. It should try to be picking up mostly of what's in front. My keyboard is technically under or behind where this microphone is mounted at the moment. So I'm just gonna type a bunch and it hears me talking. Is it picking up the keyboard? 
Mm -hmm. Now the WASD keys. So this is kind of how it would sound if you're playing a shooter or whatever kind of game on the PC. Okay. Now, let's do some off-access stuff. So this is me talking directly in front of towards the microphone. This is how I would talk if I was like streaming or, or you know, just talking to the camera like this. Um, it is in a pretty decent spot to pick up audio from me. So there you go. This is me on the left side of it, or, well, one side of it. And uh, let's get all the way behind it, huh? Uh, I'm talking all the way behind it over here. Hey. Now let's go over to this side over here. Talking from this side right here. Oh, yeah. How's, how's that picking up? And uh, let's just go backwards a little bit. Just see how sensitive it is because it can pick up a lot of room noise. Um, yo. Huh? Here we are. Talking from over here. How about from over here, huh? Huh? How's it? How, can you hear me still? Hmm? All right. Let's talk a little closer for the proximity effect. All right. So here we are. Got to be careful so I don't peek the microphone. But uh, this is uh, what you get with the proximity effect. Hmm. What about plosives, maybe? Do you need a pop filter for this thing? Pop, 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 pop. Please bring pizza pronto. Podcast is you the man. Ooh, lastly, sometimes you accidentally bump into your microphone, and uh, how does that sound? Any reverberation from inside the microphone there? Hmm? All right, I just listened back to everything on this one just to hear how it sounded versus my Avermedia Mic 330 Dynamic. And I have to say, that Dynamic microphone, the Avermedia, with no tuning, it really doesn't sound that great. It needs the tuning to bring out the best in it. However, this guy sounds better than that mic straight up raw, which is a good starting point for this microphone. Whereas that one can be tuned to get better audio from that point. This has a better starting point for tuning. It doesn't have stock for stock. I could already tell that in terms of bass, this doesn't have as much bass, sure. But all of that can be tuned with some EQ software in OBS or uh, however you do it. Maybe with a program like Voice Meter, for example. The noise rejection is not bad, like I mentioned, but I have to say that it being a condenser, the sensitivity of it, it's really up there. This is a really hot microphone. I had to turn the gain way down just to get into get it into an acceptable non-peaking range. So yeah, and then when I was doing that test and I was walking further back from the mic, I could still my, hear, hear myself. Sure, it sounded like I was far away, but you know, which I was, but I could still hear it. Which, you know, that's just how a condenser works, especially a hot condenser like this one. So if you want a mic that, that is going to be picking up more of a room noise, I mean, I guess in a way that could be good. Let's say you're moving around, building in a room, you're doing a stream, or you just want to talk to people, and you don't want to be right in front of your desk like this, that could be an advantage. However, if you want noise rejection, you know, that's just not a condenser's forte. But... There are things like RTX Voice or NVIDIA Broadcast that can just take care of that. And next thing you know, now you have a good sounding mic with noise rejection that can eliminate all that background noise stuff. Hmm? So there are ways to help it out, EQ and uh, RTX Voice sort of stuff. But as far as how it sounds vocally, it's pretty good for a USB plug and play mic. I don't know if it's $130 good, but you know what? People have been paying that much or more for blue Yetis all the damn time. So who, you know, what, who's, who am I to say? There you have it. Really, this is as, as basic as it gets because this microphone is marketed 100% ease of use, plug and play. There's no software to go with it. There's nothing crazy, nothing fancy. You plug the mic in and you set it up and you're good to go. That means that this could be good for portable setups, could be good for if you just want a simpler setup, or if you're just gaming and you want a good microphone upgrade with uh, not so much of a focus on streaming and what, what else is needed that you need to go with that. If you just want a good sounding microphone that's just plug and play ready to go, this competes with a lot of, let's say, 
budget microphone options that also do not come with software that are also USB and that are also cardioid condenser. However, I believe this one has a bigger capsule, which means it's gonna have better audio quality. This one has monitoring, which a lot of the cheaper ones don't, but some certainly do. And uh, yeah, $130 for what boils down to a basic microphone though, is just a little high to be asking for it. it especially because it doesn't come with a shock mount. Sure, it's internally shock mounted, but I'd feel more comfortable if it had one like this already on it. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, peace of mind kind of thing, but all right. Like no included pop filter. Like some other things could be included to make it feel like $130 is more worth it. But at $130, this is directly competing against the Elgato Wave 1, which is a perfectly good sounding microphone, but it has amazing software capability. However, one could argue that this might not be aimed at streamers and that one might be. And would you get that microphone with the kind of powerful software that it comes with if you don't need that? Well, you, you have a lot more options and this joins the fray in that range. I gotta say though, I feel like it does have some pretty good noise rejection qualities because my AC is on, even though the door is closed, so it shouldn't affect it too much. Um, but here I am in my room, ceiling fan on, computer is on literally right next to the microphone, but it is behind it, so that helps. And uh, can you guys hear anything? Not bad, right? Anyways, those are my thoughts on the NZXT capsule, an all new USB condenser microphone from the guys at NZXT. Thank you guys for sending this out for me to check out. And uh, yeah, if this is something you guys want to check out, or if it's something you want to add to your setup, maybe you're an NZXT fanatic and want uh, everything NZXT, or if you just like the design and style of this microphone, I will have a link down in the description below so you guys can check that out. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So feel free to stop by, drop a follow, and let's talk some tech or let's talk some microphones, you know, all sorts of stuff. What did you think? What did you guys think about this microphone? Drop a comment down below. Let's talk about it. Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out for now. Bye. Also got a bunch of other content over here, including other microphone reviews, because we have been doing a bunch of them. <laughs> and uh, you can also have a competitor at a very similar price point to this that has RGB and is a dynamic. Very interesting stuff, all linked right here. Go ahead and click one. Okay, hopefully you clicked it by now.